We know that the Agos Damien is where you get the word demon from, which is another ancient word for where they get all the satanic stuff when they want to draft their shit to Christians and try to make a damn du dualistic monster because you got to have somebody evil in a religion. You got to be good, you got to be evil. And you scare people into it by following the doggone good because you're scared of the evil. Agos Damien, based on Thrice Hermes, Agos Damien is the name for good spirit. And it says, it tells us that he is represented among the Egyptians as the, as the anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic with blue black skin. And with the girdle about his waist, carrying a scepter and wearing a winged crown. That just look like any damn black man walking around damn Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that's symbolic in Freemasonry and Rosary. Yeah. That's right. Uh, he is the first aspect of Hermes Trismegistus with the Anthrops, or the cosmic man of light who has heaven for a head. Uh, has heaven for head and Ava for the body and the earth at his feet for the water around him, the ocean and the depth. He is perhaps the indefeatable and uh, indefinable, excuse me, and with also Kim, Kim Camaphis, Kim Camaphis, Lord of the perfect black who teaches Isis the mysteries of alchemy, Agos Damon, is separate, is, is the shepherd and the guardian of the initiates who invoke him. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Remember that. They're saying the mysteries of alchemy, Agos Damon, is just another word for melanin. It's in this damn book, right here, the same thrice great Hermes, you can get it right here and all in this particular book. Bearing witness to some stuff. Now let's go on. Let's go on. Agos Damien's papyrus refers to Osiris who is preeminently connected with the soul and the underworld and the unseen world of the mysterious, mysterious dark. This is all coming from thrice great Hermes. Osiris is the dark god who is the lord of the perfect black. That's where you get all that stuff from. You're going to find it in the thrice great Hermes material. Amen Kemp, the black blue god signifying hidden, who holds himself hidden in the eye or the veils himself as the purple. The blue black god, the demon, um, uh, the, the, the demon. Um, now, <clears throat> In, in, in the book, there's a guy named Steve Salvador. Now, you mentioned that <clears throat> all this magical stuff at, at God and our letters, they, 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 they're getting rid of all that. Now, in the book, the serious mystery, because I was saving grace, is the Dogon tribe. In the serious mystery, on page 191, on page 191, in this book, he goes and he talks about the Siri Siggy ceremony, and he talks about the Siggy ceremony represented two Egyptian Henti ceremony, and he explains that the Henti ceremony means a digit of time or the end or also the end of eternity. So how can it eternity end? Well, Based on the parallel goddamn universe, <laughs> if this universe is enormous and it's an eternity, it can end. <coughs> now, I got a tape that I brought up here that Brother Bob C.C. is going to copy, and it's called Fractals, the Chaos, the Colors of Infinity. And they talk about, based on the mathematical equations of a guy by the name of Mandelbrot, they broke this shit down in the early 1900s that, the, that, that the, the universe is vast and enormous. And it gives off all this chaos color. But they couldn't tap into it until 1982 when they, when they logged it on to the computer. 
But in there, you listen real close, one of the scientists will say, all of this shit is coming from somewhere near Sirius. <coughs> and we know Sirius is now down here, because we failed, and it's talking about inside of the black dot. The real universe. It goes on to say in there, because he goes to England, I said it the last time, you'll see it on the tape. The little Stephen Hawkins or Stephen Hawkins. Yeah sitting in the damn wheelchair. Yeah. All the crackers are saying that the universe, there is no end. He's talking about universe A, the one we're trying to get out of. And Stephen Hawkins talking on his little machine said there is an end of the universe. And it's something called a plank uh, limb. He said something like a plank limb and I could barely hear what he was saying because he got this old voice computer shit. And he said, it is a million of a million of a million, million of a million. It's a million times smaller than a goddamn atom. It's one single point. And when we get to that point, the universe is going to explode. So there is an end to eternity. One dot. And that dot, or that point, is inside of us. So when he said a digit of time, an end of eternity, a serious mystery on page 190, you gotta read the whole, uh, uh, read a chapter from like, um, basically start reading from a chapter from page 190 of serious mystery, Robert Temple, and he goes into this digit of time, and he talks about the secret ceremony that was done in 1994. He goes on at the end of the shit, at the end of the page, when he goes through all this hinty and himu, he say the shit, all averages up to a god named Seca, a death god of Egypt. That's the same Apep motherfucker. And it's inside of us. You see what I'm saying? So, he said that there were 72 mighty kings and princes with King Solomon commanded into vessels of brass. That's the demons he put in the brass, which is in the head. We'll go into some other stuff. With their legions whom Belel, Belis, Asmadei and Gath were chief, which are these particular demons. And it was to be noted that Solomon did this because of their pride, and they were never declared other, for other reasons why thus they were bound. He bound them. He never declared other reasons thus why he bound them. And when he had thus bound them up and sealed the vessels, he by divine power then chased them into a deep hole in a lake in Babylon. Very key that you understand that. He chased them into a lake in Babylon. I'm going to break this Babylon mystery in a few minutes. And they in Babylon wandering with each other, then they did then go rolling into the lake and break the vessel. So there was a people outside of Babylon, broke the vessels and expected to find a great store, a treasure there. But then they had broken it open. But when they had broken it open, out flew chief spirits immediately with their legions following them. And they were all restored to their former place in Belial, who entered into a certain image. And then the answers unto those we did offer sacrifices to them and did worship the image of their God. What you just heard there was basically a concept of Solomon, which is the hidden son, which is our true self, Saul, which means son, Amen, which means hidden, Amen, Ra, gathered up these demons of these energies and put them in this place in Babylon. Other people, hoping to find great riches, tampered with them and opened them up and out flew these things and these people had to worship them. This was an apocalyptic story saying that the great riches are the whole humanity who is searching for all kinds of shit outside of the soul. Later on will degenerate to the point whereas the original souls will be free and they will have to worship them. That's what this stuff is actually talking about. It's actually, it's actually talking about.